Hi guys, sorry I haven't been around much lately. Unfortunately, I've been fighting off the evil forces of Rona, uh, but I'm back now. I'm still a little bit peaky, but we're going to go through some content. Today, I'm going to be talking about electromagnetic interference and how it can cause problems between your direct drive wheel and your VR headset. I had some serious problems with my VR headset and this is how I managed to get around them. Obviously, I didn't do this alone. Uh, some friends from various communities have helped out here. So kudos to those guys for helping to come up with this solution. So electromagnetic interference that I'm talking about here is induced from the source, which is your direct drive wheel. And the victim of that induced interference is your VR headset, which is quite sensitive to those signals. And unfortunately, at least in the case of the valve index, is lacking in the form of chokes to try and get rid of or mitigate that interference. So then it's a simple case of adding something to impede that interference, but in a way that doesn't interfere with the source signal of the VR headset itself. This problem is exasperated by no official sources acknowledging the problem and then knowing what materials are going to have the biggest impact for you. Then, of course, we've got the problem of sourcing those materials. So the material I initially looked at for this problem was material 31. As you can see in this graph, it looks like it's a good fit for the megahertz range that we have a problem with, being that VR operates in that around one megahertz window. However, sourcing that product in Europe is not an easy feat. And when a manufacturer claims to be using Material 31, that isn't a guarantee that they are doing so. And these chokes that I initially picked up, which claimed to be Material 31, were actually Material 43. And if I'd read the reviews sooner, I would have found that out. However, I did pick these up and found they had no impact, which was a little exasperating. So you can see here that the VR headset works perfectly fine until you touch it. As soon as you touch it, you get the gray screen of death. Of course, that's not very good as the index has a little button on it. And also you've got the interpupillary device. And if you're constantly kind of trying to adjust those or select a game using the button, it's going to just fail horribly. So we've seen the problem here. We see that we get the gray screen of death whenever we try to touch our VR headset. I didn't record it, but I could also see that when I switched off the direct drive wheel, this problem was gone. So we know it's interference between the VR headset and the direct drive wheel. How do we get around this problem? But thankfully, we're not the first to have issues in VR and we can stand on the shoulders of giants that have solved this problem for us. In fact, the inventor of the Valve base station came up with this solution that we're using here. So it's a known problem and it has a known solution. However, being in Europe, it was hard to source material 31 toroids. So we had to experiment a little in finding a suitable alternative that still works. We found TDK N30 based toroids did the trick. Actually, it was an ACCSS community member that found out that TDK N30 toroids worked. We had a few members trying different materials, including myself, and none of them worked suitably. But this particular one that Victor found worked really well. And we all ended up purchasing these from Conrad, a business based in Europe. And this is what they look like. They're a coated blue toroid of just about enough size for you to be able to thread the VR headset cable through. In fact, you can see from my 
visualization here. I did so a few times in order to get the desired response. Now, I can't guarantee that this will solve your problem, but it should hopefully help to mitigate it somewhat. For me, it solved the problem entirely. Now, you might notice the winds around the toroids are spaced out fairly evenly, and this is by design, as this then stops any contamination of the signal getting across those winds. The end result is this. You can see I can now firmly touch the VR headset without a loss of signal. So I thought I'd share this problem, especially with the abundance of these new direct drive wheels that are coming to the market, including the CSL DD. It's great value for money, but if you are a VR sim racer, you might be confronted with this problem, in which case this gives you some potential solution to help mitigate this issue so you can continue to race as you currently do. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've been confronted with a similar problem, please leave a message in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay safe, guys. As you're still around, why not check out this great video? Or perhaps even this one down here. If you like what you see on this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks. Bye-bye.